Rami X back in your video. Hope you guys all enjoyed today's video. Make sure to hit that like and subscribe button as well. It would be appreciated. And I would like to hit, well, let's just say 20,000 by March. That just appeared randomly in my head. 20,000 um, in March just appeared randomly. So please make sure to hit that like and subscribe button as it's like the 20k by March. Or 20,000 subscribers by March. And uh, yeah, show the video to different links with this or just anime content in general. And we can now get into the video. So, in the last part, what happened? Well, a few things happened. First of all, Naruto became the fifth Hokage of the Hidden Leaf Village. Second of all, he stopped the Great Uchiha War. Uh, it goes by many names. The, um, the Uchiha Dynasty. It also goes by the name of the Uchiha Sefa War. It also goes by the name of, well... The Leaf Village's great struggle, as well as the Leaf Village's inner struggle. Um, as you can see, the war goes by many, many, many names. With that in mind, though, the name that I've clung on to is the War of the Great. Now, with that being said, that's just an another one of its names. Not only that, but we also did focus on the fact that Naruto was just making relations, he made relations with the cloud, and the storm, or what we'd classify as the um, village hidden in the clouds. I just classify it as a storm, because most people there um, use like lightning release, that kind of thing. With that being said, we can now fully begin the video. So, we start the video off, or start the story off again, with Naruto in his throne, or Hokage Tower area. The area that we see most Hokage sitting at. Naruto's hands would be crossed as he would relax. He looked around. On his right and left were pictures of former Hokage. He saw the first and the second, the third and the fourth. And even himself. Naruto smiled well aren't i happy happy to have an empire happy to realize madara's ambition my father will be proud i'm sure of it with that being said the window behind naruto would be broken but unbeknownst to naruto basically nothing had changed in the room he was off guard, relaxed, calm. He would breathe in the air. Naruto would breathe. Naruto would exhale. Naruto would then cross his hands as a man would glide past him. Naruto still suspected nothing. This same very man would get behind Naruto and would stab into him. What's happening? Naruto would look behind him. All he saw was the eyes of the Sharingan. Naruto continued to pour out blood from his mouth. Was he dying? He thought to himself. The QB quickly rushed to his wounds, but it was too late. Naruto had passed out. Or rather, I should say, he was Genjutsu'd. By a man that we know as Itachi Uchiha. Now, a bit of a plot twist, you could say. In the last part, we did have Itachi. Well, let's just say we had Itachi. Killed. Killed. Very badly, you could say. By Naruto. And now Itachi is killing Naruto. So the roles have kind of just been reversed. With that being said, we, well, now have no Kage in the Leaf Village, at least for now. So what's happened is that Itachi has not necessarily killed Naruto. Um, I know it's a killed, but that isn't the right word you could say. Um, but rather, he's under Genjutsu. And with that being said, this Genjutsu is the Infinite Tsukiyomi. Now, 
in Itachi Naruto's fight, Itachi didn't expend much chakra, if any at all, so he was basically able to just use the substitution jutsu and survive. With that also being said, he has enough chakra to perform a strong enough Tsukiyomi. He's basically been charging up chakra, charging, charging, charging for days now. Um, enough chakra to have a Tsukiyomi that can last four years. Naruto was not out for the count. He would quickly jump away, causing his wound to open. The wound that Itachi had inflicted. The cut, you could say. You see, in that split moment that Naruto had been genjutsued, he had also freed himself, at least long enough to get out. But the effects of the genjutsu, even though it may have lasted for mere seconds, it had been enough to put him with it a comatose. He would quickly go to his sword, grabbing it. But... As quickly as he grabbed it, it would fall back into its sheath. The thing that, well, holds the blade. With that being said, Naruto would fall on his knees. Unable to move, blood would continue to pour from his body. He was losing a lot of blood. Naruto's eyes would be blurred as he looked around. All he would see was the cunning, no, the disastrous eyes of Itachi Uchiha. Just as quickly as Itachi came into the room, Itachi would leave without a trace. Jonin would see the window broken, so all they could tell was that something had happened, so they quickly rushed to the room. Naruto would immediately get medical aid. He was a first-hand priority. With that being said, after establishing Naruto's medical condition as critical and that he was in a coma, Kakashi... Hatake would have to be the stand-in Hokage. For that time, he would be named the sixth Hokage of the Leaf Village, while the fifth was recovering. The fifth being Naruto, of course. With that being said, Naruto, while in this coma, would be able to do nothing but mourn. Mourn for what you may be ask himself. He was angered. He was beaten by the person who th he thought he had killed, the person he thought he had shattered. Not to mention the fact that over and over again, events that only brought back painful memories played within his head. These were the effects of the infinite Tsukiyomi, a genjutsu so powerful that even the legs of Naruto was subjected by its wrath. Naruto could do nothing. Nothing to free himself from the genjutsu and even though he was able to the genjutsu's effects still affected him beat him broke him devoured him naruto laid there in his bed as he was opening his eyes but he couldn't move naruto would quickly close his eyes and open them again trying to activate his sharingan but nothing would work. He felt still, alone, cold. Everything around him felt miserable. He couldn't move. He couldn't speak. He couldn't even move properly, you could say. Not to mention the fact that his eyes, his vision, I mean, was blurred. So, not to mention the fact that, well, he couldn't move. But he was also semi-blind. His thoughts were scrambled all over the place. He didn't know what to think of. He didn't know what to do. What would he do? What was he meant to do, he thought. So many things that he hadn't been able to do in his life that he wanted to. So many ambitions that he had to carry on. So many wills that he had to fulfill. Madara's will. His own will. The wills of many others. He had to do it. He couldn't just sit around while, well, while everybody was able to do something but him. It felt, you could say, miserable, as I explained before. As Naruto sat there, time would pass. You could even say that in a way, Naruto was forgotten. Nobody cared enough for Naruto to visit. We now switch to the perspective of the lonely Sasuke Uchiha. Sasuke would be visited by Itachi, as Itachi would instill fear into his little brother. Not only that, 
But I did mention how, well, a lot of the Uchiha were grouped together, like Fugaku and Mikoto. Well, they would be slain before he t- well, let's just say, Sasuke's eyes. Now, this is where Sasuke's motivation comes into play. Rather than Itachi being the one who murdered his clan, Itachi is the one who slayed his, well, let's just say, the leader of his clan. And Itachi, at least to Sasuke, is the one who slayed both his father and mother. Mother, sorry. Killed them both in cold blood, you could say. With that being said, there wasn't much a man could do, let alone a mere child like Sasuke. So Sasuke needed power. He sought it out. After Itachi left, he packed his bags and left. He ran as far as he could. He remembered many things. But what he remembered the most was Orochimaru. You see, Orochimaru is the man who could give Sasuke power. Now, it wasn't illicitly stated in this what if heck, the previous parts as well that Orochimaru ever met Sasuke, but due to the fact that, let's just say in the canon timeline, um, if we were to like match these timelines in like where they directly are, this is right where the Chunin exams would have been. So, yeah, take that out, you will. But the Chunin exams haven't even happened yet, right? So, this right now, if I um, say it correctly or like position it correctly so you guys to understand, this time, at least matching to the canon, would be right where the Chunin exams were. So, yeah, take that how you will. After Sasuke continued the run, he would be stopped by a Jonin. This Jonin was much stronger than Sasuke. Even though Sasuke was powerful, he wasn't this powerful. And he was quickly able to subdue Sasuke. Quick enough for Sasuke uh, to not be able to use his Sharingan. With that being said, taking away Sasuke's main weapon, the Uchiha would be brought back to the village. And the training exams would be held in a neighboring country. The country known as the Hidden Cloud Village. Or village, I should say. It's not necessarily a country inherently. With that being said, the tuning exams would be held here as many things would be different. It would be tested on many different things than our, or the tuning exams that we know and love. With that being said as well, let's just say this is where Sasuke would meet Orochimaru. Now, the tuning exams aren't really important for anybody else but Sasuke specifically. So, for the sake of it, I will still mention it, as it does play a small role in the story. Shikamaru, Choji, and Ino would all be promoted to tuning, as well as Kiba. With that being said, no other candidates made the cut besides Shino, who would be promoted more than tuning. To Jonin, something that doesn't really happen. Now, why am I putting him to Jonin? Well, there are many videos on the power of Shino Aburame, but Shino is actually very, very, very powerful, and he's kind of underlooked, so him having a Jonin role um, should show you guys at least how powerful he is. With that being said, that's most of the important stuff, but Orochimaru would be able to sway Sasuke into coming with him. Sasuke would be missing, and... The leaf would have nowhere to blame except for the Hidden Cloud Village. This would incite war, with Naruto the fifth Okage being, well, at least to the neighboring villages, dead, for all they know. The treaty would not be held. The cloud could do nothing but defend themselves. They didn't want to invoke Naruto's order. A and Naruto had become friends over a short period of time. But with that being said, they had no choice, and sometimes in small instances all out war would break out with that being said naruto's efforts were you could say too little but the word i'd describe them as would be futile they were utterly useless with that being said four years would pass of sasuke getting stronger and closer to his goal he now had two goals Kill Itachi Uchiha for the murder of his mother and father. And, well, kill Naruto Uzumaki 
for the role he played. The role he played in utterly defeating him. Now, with that, Sasuke would become just as strong as his canon counterpart after the time skip, if not stronger. As Sasuke, well, let's just say, as Sasuke finished his four years of training and killed Orochimaru, Naruto would wake up. Opening his eyes, the nurse in his room would come to his side. Are, are you awake? The fifth Hokage, he's woken from his slumber. Naruto's legs would move, twitching even if only a little. His hands would start to crack, similar to Ken Kaneki if you know who he is. With that being said, he would crack all of his fingers individually, one by one. He would then crack his knuckles all together, moving his head as he would crack his neck. I've awoken, have I? The Nine Tails would talk to Naruto as Naruto looked around, basically absorbing his surroundings. Yes, you have woken. It's been four, well, let's just say, for the sake of it, not so good years. I uh, see. You were bored, were you? I was bored indeed. I'm bored anyways, just sitting here inside your body. But it's even more boring when, yes, I know, when I'm not doing anything but looking at you. Exactly. Now, what will you do, Naruto? I'm not sure, Kurama. When did I tell you my name? Remember two years back? While I still couldn't move? Ah, oh, I remember. That was a great conversation now, wasn't it? It was. Now, Karama, I have a question. Mm-hmm. What do you think of me becoming the Hokage again? I'm fine with it as long as you're able to be free. Be free, huh? Well, that doesn't seem too bad. Not bad at all. I would love to be free, free to do as I wish, but also to stand in Azkage, only grow my reputation further. Fine, I agree as well, Kurama. Naruto would quickly resume power as he would meet with all the Kage as a five Kage summit would be held. Two things were apparent. The other Kage all had something on their mind. Whilst Naruto had no true goal in mind, all he really cared about was knowing what the other villages were up to, through intel, of course, and through conversation. With that being said, he also wanted to know a few other things. Why the Tsuchikage, first, or not Tsuchikage, my apologies, why the Sans Kage, for some odd reason, was, well, for the sake of it, not sane. Why? And also, just so you guys are aware, this is Gara who I'm talking about. He is this Kage right now for the Sand Village, for Tsunagakure. And now he's trying to figure out why their Kage looks so mentally deranged, you could say, if that makes sense. With that being said... The Five Kage Summit would be initiated. Now, the Kaze Kage would talk first as he spoke in a semi-melodic tone. Now, out of you all, the Hokage is usually the strongest. But, from what I can see, a long-haired boy sits in front of me. One with blackish and a tint of blonde hair at the tips. He doesn't look strong at all to me, but he carries some sort of, I don't know, some sort of vibe to him. Oh, and, well, the Suchikage, he just looks like an old man. And the Mizukage, she looks like a woman who, I don't know, I don't know, she's some 
old hag. Old hag. All the Kage were angered by Gara's remarks. He would then look at the Rai Kage. Oh, and the Rai Kage seems. He seems too arrogant in himself. Look how he's dressed. Look how he wants combat. You... Are you trying to pick a fight? A would ask. He would then look back at the Hokage. Not to mention the fact that the Hokage here, it seems as if he's mocking me. Mocking you? What do you mean? Look at you. You look as if you haven't eaten. Is that supposed to be you? What? I don't know. Bragging that you're stronger than me. Why would that be the case? Yeah, you just haven't eaten in years. Years. Four years to be exact. Uh, uh, whatever. Not to mention, shut your mouth, Naruto would say. I don't like how you keep, what, insulting the other Kage? They all came here to discuss business. If this is the only business you want to discuss, then you can get the hell out of the summit. I'm a Kage just as much as you are, am I not? That may very well be true. But just know this. You Kaze Kage. Whatever your name is, Naruto would pull a paper out of his pocket, reading all the names of the Kages at the summit. Two names that he wasn't familiar with. Mei Terumi and Gara Kazekage. So you must be Gara, and that must be Mei. Mei, uh, A, and Onoki. You three, I have no problem with. But you, Gara, the Kazekage of the sand, I'll let you know this. Keep insulting these Kage. Keep acting as if you're better than ever you... One of us. No, any one of us. Keep making small remarks and not discussing business. Not discussing why you're here. And I will bury your village to the dirt along with you. I've been asleep for more than four years. And honestly, waking up to this bull is, well, annoying. I... I will not be treated as scum. Gara's sand would immediately activate, as Naruto would quickly engage Gara, slamming him into the ground as he would put his sand at bay. What the? Gara couldn't comprehend Naruto's speed as Naruto kicked him around the room. All the Kage closed their eyes as some decided to peek. I say some, but there's only three other Kage in the room. With that being said... Sometimes they would open their eyes, just to see Naruto's speed, to watch it even. They would watch as Naruto, well, glided around the room. This was Naruto's only exercise for four years. Gara, would you mind serving as my, I don't know, training dummy? I will not be reduced into a training dummy. Gara's sand would get stronger and stronger. Oh, you don't like it? Then fight me. Naruto would sigh as he almost got hit by one of Nor uh, Gara's sand waves. With that being said, Gara would yell out, Sand release! Sand bullets! Bullets would hit Naruto one by one as Naruto's skin would start to bruise. Ah, not bad. Naruto would quickly get behind Gara, kneeing him. This would send Gara flying into the wall of the summit. So, Gara, are you done being my dummy? <sighs> no, I'm not your dummy, so, yeah, I'm done. Well, as much as you are mentally insane, you're stupid. You think so? Fine. Then I'll just have to kill you. Sand binding. Sabaku. Binding coffin. Sand would appear around Naruto as it would quickly grasp him. Naruto would get his teeth as red aura would then surround this sand. The sand would all disappear, and Naruto's body was now starting to wrap, or be wrapped, I should say, with red, ominous chakra, the chakra of the Nine Tails. 
So, do you think you're special, Gara? Of course, I'm the most special. The most special? Yes. Look at me. I have an advantage over all of you. I have a tailed beast. Your tailed beast is the one tail, is it not? Shukaku, the sand spirit. Mine? Well, it's... <gasps> Naruto would fall on its knees as Karama pulled him into his subconscious. What do you want, Kyuubi? Mm. Are you mad at me? You address me as Nine Tails or Kyuubi, not Karama. I'm a little mad. I was in the middle of a fight. He mentioned his tailed beast. Now he's superior for that. Remember when you said if I gave you the power to both become Kage, defeat the Uchiha and ninja fighting, and stop the war, that you would let me rampage when I wanted just once? Oh, you don't say. Say it ain't so. So you want to use that opportunity now? Of course I do. I want to crush that scrawny brat right where he stands. Then have at him, QB. I can't wait to relish in his defeat as he sees that he's not superior in one bit. Ah! And with that being said, this has been Rami X. Hope you guys all enjoyed the video. Make sure to hit the like and subscribe button as it would be greatly appreciated. And Rami X...